saddlebags on. But I always carry shoes for what size of horse I'm riding, for instance, Heinz. And I like to have one of these. I just made this for myself. It carries some nails in it. But if you don't have one of these, you can just tell your farrier, hey, give me enough nails to tack a shoe on. Just put them in some tape. Give me your best pocket. Right? It's kind of a cool, a cool idea. But uh, I carry it like this. And let's say I'm riding a court horse. He wears a size aught or the one. He's probably going to have size five nails, right? And if he had nice little clean clinches, hopefully the shoe just comes right off, right? Sometimes it doesn't. But, how many of you ever had to tack a shoe on and you're like, crap, I'm going through the same nail hole. It's loose. Has anybody ever experienced that? I like to carry size sixes. Because you have a shoe that's tacked on with either six or eight nails and your horse has been wearing it a couple weeks and you lose it. When you go to tack that shoe back on, if you go back through the same nail holes, the nail holes are kind of wallet, right? Yeah. But if you have the next size up, It'll fill the hole. So, but uh, I shoot some horses for Mara Harrower down the road. And her husband Kim makes like all kinds of cool stuff. This is his little company. It's sixes. You need to have multiple sizes because there's nothing worse if you're not experienced and trying to, oh my god, where is this where does this need to go? So like personally with my horses, I like to have a small tight clinch. That way if the shoe comes off he trips or something. I'd rather pull the shoe off clean and me and my horse not go to the side. Has the bevel. Oh. Because every nail, do you see how it slopes like this? Yeah. It's not like every horseshoe nail is just straight. straight. So it, it's going to curve out. So all that is is the groove. I can feel it with my thumb and I know that's the inside because it's going to drive out. So no matter what, can it, everybody see that? Let me just pass them around. No matter what, every horseshoe nail has a bevel on it. Just, just pass it around if, you, if you've never really looked at it. So if you're inexperienced, you're like, oh my god, I'm nervous to nail my horse, I'm going to hop in my horse. If you put it where the old nails were, or it's in the white line, and the bevel's going out, as it goes down, it's going to come out. No matter what. Okay? And if you had to do it, it doesn't matter if it's ugly. You just want to get home, right? Because you don't. If it's an awkward situation for you, chances are your horse might not have ever had it done. So then when we come and we're like, hey, you're going to stand like this for 45 minutes, they might not like it. But we're going to get into that in a minute. Okay? So if I have this, I have my shoe, I have my nails, and let's say you lose the shoe. Or let's say the nails are so hard, you know, like when the nails are like welded in the holes? Mm -hmm. You can't even reuse it, right? That's why you need it's not a big deal, right? Because that's that sucks for me if I pull a shoe and it's all twisted because he stepped on it. And then like the nails are welded in there so hard I can't get them out anyway. Well, this solves all your problems. Okay. How many of y'all ever tried to level a shoe? To do what? Level a like like you have a shoe that's bent. Make it flat. Make it flat, level a shoe. Yeah, Anybody? Like yeah. Well, you can bite your head doing that. Huh? Oh man, you're like that. Wow. Let me tell y'all a little secret, okay? If you're gonna tack a shoe on a horse, get your pliers, get your hammer, whatever, put it between two rocks, and you can even see the nails. The shoe will stay on if it's touching the heels and the toe. Does that make sense? The nails are in the middle, sucking it up. But if you have it loose here, 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 and the horse walks, it's going to get looser, looser, and looser, boing, gone. Okay? So, when you get your shoe, you have your fair, hey, give me them old shoes, you know. Just pass, pass these around. See, see what I'm talking about. Because you can sit there and bite your head on flatness. Just remember, you're, you're just trying to get a shoe on your horse to get home so your horse isn't crippled. That's all we're trying to do. Okay? So we got our shoe nailed on. Now we got to find a rock. Nice square rock. You don't have one? Because you've seen your barrier when he puts it on, he like blocks it, right? Right. He 
you can like put the you can put a rock under here or something because you got to make sure it's set you see that it's almost like you're you're making sure it's a solid contact well then once again this tool doesn't have a clincher pushing it into the foot and you have to keep a rock it'd be nice to have a rock about the size of a baseball underneath it because as you're hitting down, you'll push the nail right back through the hole. Mm. So stay here. Done. This side. Done. Hammer it <coughs> into the foot. Yeah. Hit that one. Bend it down, bend it down. Mash it in the foot. You drive the nail. It's sticking up. Twist it off. It doesn't matter if it's ugly. If you're just trying to get home. Your barrier's going to fix it. Why wouldn't you use the cutters that are on that? Yeah, yeah, well, well you you would. Okay. But but I, I feel like with the cutters, like every horse I clinch for my clients, if he's gonna pull it, he's gonna pull it. Okay. I don't want someone to pull it when they're going over a jump or they're building to a steer and the horse that's on there so much he falls. That That's not good. Then I'm gonna have to acrylic the foot, make a fake foot to nail into, blah, blah, blah. Small clinches are the way to go. Okay. And you know, this might be kind of hard to do, but I promise you, any horse that's had this stuff done with them, it's going to be so much easier for me to shoot. There's so many horses in this world that have just never had any of this done. And then they're supposed to just stand for an hour while we pound that back in the stall jack. And I'm like, do we have extra shoes? Uh, just, just pack extra shoes. <laughs> so. You know the shape of your foot. Let's say you even have a whole string. Let's say you're packing eight heels, a bunch of horses. You get a bunch of shapes that are close. You make them wide. Because I can close a shoe on a rock, but opening a shoe on a rock really sucks. That's not fun. <laughs> you know, it takes a while to find the right rock. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. This guy what knows the drill. For rock? <laughs> this guy knows the drill. Just take some and have them open, like he said. Close them when you get there. Don't worry about the level. All we want is a little suck. If you can put it between two rocks and hit it in the middle, you're, you're good to go. Everybody make it. Does that make sense here, buddy? Okay. I don't carry a clinch block if I have my packing stuff, because I have some of these. You know, like you'll see your barrier. After he's done driving nails, he grabs that little metal block and blocks them. Well, I have a set of these. That's just like a block. So that eliminates weight off my horse. Okay. I don't think he clicks like a cowboy because I'm packing pictures. If I'm a packer. Okay. Everybody's seen uh, the little, uh, you know, like let's say you got to knock that nail out, clean the hole out. And everybody's seen uh, the set of these. Most cowboys I know they pack these around so they can, you know, oh man, that there's there's some dirt in that hole, I gotta pack it out, you know? Well that that kind of packs awkward to me. That's just waiting to tear something. So I like to pack them. I use these for my handmade shoes when I'm poking, you know, knocking out the bottom of the nails. This just packs better. What do you call that? A pritchel. So like if you're making a hand. Because how many times have you drove in an inn and oh, it's too high, my horse is off, or it's too low? Well, if you don't want to carry this, before you nail it in all the way, just look at it. <laughs> right? There you go. There you go. Let's try to be minimal and not be wasting a bunch of nails in the backcountry. Because then you have a bunch of crooked nails. Now, where are we going to pack the crooked nails? Okay, everybody see my, my thought process there? You can also get them nails and straighten those on the rock, too. Uh, yeah. That's we're getting real bumpy. Uh, it, it takes forever to train them. It takes forever to get their mane to grow out. It takes forever to put weight on them. But you can fix their feet in five minutes. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. It's always great to meet someone. First five minutes meet them. They're already lying. That's uh, <laughs> great. Okay. Me personally, um, having a fair business, I don't have any bad horses. I've done a ton of them, especially when I was younger and I was really hungry. When I first came to Jackson, I probably did everything wrong. But 
I, I have these accounts, right? Like you get an account that has a bunch of nice horses and they have colts. They have <coughs> and there's always some you have to get around, no matter what. And with horses, how many you have five different people, how many opinions you can have? Okay. That's right. Okay. So this is what I like to do. Doesn't mean it's the way. This is what I like to do. Because I don't tie up legs. I don't go beaten. I don't I don't I don't do any of that. Okay. Because I do a lot of cold starting stuff. I'm like even start pounding on my foot. Like, what an opportunity. Done that before. <laughs> But you guys have all seen where the horse just jerks it. Yeah. Okay? Let's a little higher. Okay. Let's, let's not even put her through stress. She's good. As soon as she pulls it away, this is what you guys need to do with your own horses. Young horses, old horses. The moment she pulls it away, I don't even look at it as she's pulling her foot away. Let's pretend she decided to move. Okay? Get a shoe at home, get an old shoe at home, get a hammer, and pound on it. Because most horses are bad to shoe when you go to nail. Mm -hmm. And there's nails sticking out. Horses have pulled nails through my legs. They've jerked it away and stabbed themselves right here. And guys, like, question. Well, our, what my horses are bad, they're bad when you're pulling the shoes off. I mean, I have them even run backwards and do some other things. The nailing on the shoe isn't as bad as pulling the shoes off for some reason. Are they cutting the clinches? Mm, Not know. necessarily, so, probably. So look, I'm, I, I will <clears throat> never badmouth farriers, work farriers, routine, whatever. Like we're all in this together. I wish we could. I wish all farriers be along so we could help each other tap shoes on each other's clients without undercutting and saying, "Well, that looks like crap." But maybe tell them to cut the clinches. Okay, well, it's kind of hard to tell them what to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, maybe you change different person. Perhaps the clinches, if, if the clinches are tight, let me guess, is your horse a small footed horse? Mm, we, I ha we have four horses, two are tiny and two are giant, so. Okay, which ones are the worst, the small footed ones? Mm, big footed ones. The big footed ones, okay. Yeah. So it's the pulling off the shoes. Mm. He's ripping it through his foot. That's mm. terrible. I mean, what if you pulled each nail individually? Um, okay. Well, I just I was thinking if there was if it was a training thing. If you think it's a shoer thing, then I'll talk to them. So. What 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 you could do is this is what I would do. Obviously, you're not going to simulate pulling a shoe because that would be very counterproductive. But you could you think you do this. Just get under here all the time and just teach him that no matter what he's having done, if he has a foot up in the air, stand still or you're going to move. That's what you can do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I would do this all the time. Every foot. Because if you do that right there, <laughs> our job's going to be easy. People say, oh, I don't have time to work with my horse. I don't have time to ride. Bullshit. <laughs> go out there go out there and do this for five seconds because if you go out there while your horse is eating and you do that and he's good great you can go to bed that night without riding him and you know he respects you but go out there and you're like man he's been kind of a jerk on this leg right here you know and you do that and he snatches it from you work him around a little bit the moment he's snatches it. This horse is just really good, but can you guys see if it was an example? Yeah. And right about here, the horse is going to say, oh, I'm sorry. 